So in the previous lecture, we've looked at the ability of live viruses to interact one with another to potentially alter the outcome from infection. And what I want to do now is look at that in the context of the live viral vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella. Dr. Paul Offit is one of the great spokesmen for vaccines and was asked on Democracy Now! why was MMR vaccine combined? His answer was very interesting, because you could. You could do it safely, as was proven. And when you combine those vaccines, you didn't interfere with or change the safety profile or immunogenicity profile. Now, I want you to reflect on the word interfere there. Extremely interesting that he should use that word. Let's go back now to some of the studies of MMR vaccine safety when it was first put together. Here's one of the earliest studies of the combined live measles, mumps, rubella vaccine conducted by Beinackert and colleagues at Merck. And the purpose of their study was to examine the least quantity of virus required to induce effective immunity, the durability of the antibody response, in other words, how long did immunity last, and the vaccine stability. What was noticeably absent from the purpose of this study was to examine the safety, what actually happened in terms of clinical reactions when you combine these three viruses. Now, what they actually confirmed in that 1969 study was that there was a dose and strain dependent interference. Words they used, interference between the component viruses of MMR. This was not researched further until 1974 by Minikawa in Japan, who wrote Beinak et al. reported that the choice of a particular strain and the level of its attenuation had considerable effects upon serological and clinical responses although these authors did not investigate these factors in detail. Minikawa then went on to confirm interference of mumps upon measles and rubella. So it was particularly the addition of the mumps virus that influenced the antibody and the clinical response to measles and rubella. He confirms that the clinical reactions and the antibody response were influenced by this interference. So yes, Dr. Offit, interference is a clear consequence of combining these vaccines. Minakawa concluded that further studies are necessary to clarify these issues. Alarmingly, those studies done to look at safety have never taken place. Incidentally, however, there was a study by Crawford and Gamillion, and they were looking at epidemic measles and rubella vaccination in Air Force recruits. They did a prospective study using unvaccinated controls, most unusual, 512 vaccinees, 835 controls, and they were looking at diarrheal disease as an outcome. Now, what you can see in this graph is the percentage of those developing diarrheal disease following vaccination, with the controls on the left divided into men in green and women in red. Those given the single measles vaccine alone those given the rubella vaccine alone, and those given the combined measles-rubella vaccine. And what is quite evident is that even though the measles vaccine alone produces an increase in the incidence of diarrheal disease, when you combine measles with, and rubella vaccines together, then this is very much greater, particularly in women. So one plus one, measles plus rubella, does not equal two. It equals something very different in terms of the clinical reaction. Further work was done on this interference phenomenon, and this is a paper from 1988, but again, the issue of safety is barely touched upon. Dr. Neil Halsey, one of the architects of vaccination policy in this country, said at a meeting, if there is a biological reason to suspect that there may be interference or blunting or blocking in terms of the antibody response, then comparative studies should be done. These have not been done. Dr. Offit says, separately, all you do is increase the number of shots without in any way changing the safety profile. I'm afraid it's impossible to say that, certainly in light of the information that we've seen. Now, what happened after MMR was introduced is they decided to combine it with the chickenpox vaccine. And so they did studies comparing MMR and MMRV, that is the varicella vaccine, a trivalent versus a quadrivalent vaccine. What they found is that when you gave the MMR and V together, 
it doubled the rate of febrile convulsions in the recipients compared with MMR given alone. Now, that was considered somewhat innocuous, but despite that, people reverted to using the MMR vaccine by preference. It's not innocuous because the Chinese then went on to show that febrile seizures in children are associated with an up to 3.5 increased risk of autism. This is not innocuous. And so by combining chickenpox with MMR, have you increased the risk of not just febrile seizures, but autism risk as well? Now, Dr. Offit went one stage further. In trying to address parents' concerns about do multiple vaccines overwhelm or weaken the infant's immune system, he tried to address the issue of is more better or worse? Can we safely combine these vaccines and give them on schedule without uh, causing uh, an overwhelming of the, the infant's immune system or weakening that immune system? And he wrote, the young infant is fully capable of generating protective humoral and cellular immune responses to multiple vaccines given simultaneously. And we've discussed what humoral, the antibody response, and cellular, the cytotoxic T cell response, mean in the context of a previous lecture. Now, what's interesting is Dr. Offit then went on to present a theoretical scenario where he calculated the ability of the immune system by virtue of its genetic makeup to synthesize, to produce antibodies in response to any number of infections and came to the conclusion initially that you could have 10,000 antigens, 10,000 vaccine antigens safely in an infant and it went on later to become 100,000. This is a theoretical scenario. Because theoretically it can, we therefore should be able to give these vaccines. It's an extremely naive way of looking at the world. Let me give you an analogy. I have a Maserati. I don't have a Maserati, but let's assume I have a Maserati. And on the clock on my Maserati, it says 250 miles an hour. This car is capable, theoretically, of going 250 miles. I've never driven it at 250 miles an hour, but that's what it says. Does that make it safe for me to drive? that car at 250 miles an hour because theoretically it's capable of doing that in all circumstances, in all conditions, in all weather, with any driver, even to drive at 100 miles an hour or 50 miles an hour or to be anything but standing still. One size does not fit all. And therefore, because something theoretically can happen does not mean that it is safe for us actually to do that. So in summary, Viral interference in combined live viral vaccines is real. It affects both the efficacy, that's the protective uh, effectiveness of the vaccine, and the safety profile, although this has not been properly studied. And in understanding this effect, we have barely scratched the surface.